Hi everyone, this is Odd Apostrophe. Let's continue our game of Super Mario 3D All-Stars, a Super Mario Galaxy on Nintendo Switch. We're getting closer. Closer to the end. Maybe another two sessions, possibly? I don't know if I can do everything in this session or not. I mean, within 45 minutes, it's a little tough. I just never know when I'm going to run to a level that's going to give me, like, a lot of trouble. Oh, you know, Pikmin 3 also came out. Um, the Dox Edition also came out. I don't know if anybody wants to see that or not. It's one of those games where I've started it multiple times and just have never you know, follow through and finish the entire game. I think just a lot of those RTS games, um, they just feel like such a chore, <laughs> you know? And I just know I'm going to spend a lot of time retrying stuff. Um, but, I don't know. We really should give it a go. I mean, really, the uh, the Switch has uh, has been a uh, you know a place for uh, second chances for games that were on the the Wii or the or the Wii U. Uh, which is good because games on those platforms were really good. Uh, they were just on a platform without a lot of users. Well, no, I mean, not the Wii. I mean, the Wii's obviously had tons of users. So, you know, not aspire to... Uh, I think the weird thing about the Wii, um, you know, because it, was, it lived in the uh, Xbox and uh, PlayStation 3 era, is that uh, press coverage. I mean, if you want to call, you know, the people that cover games press, um, it was always uh, it was always played off as the system that was the least successful. Um, when in fact it was one of the most successful systems of that generation. It's weird how the hardcore crowd, you know, they just you know, when they don't like something then they just assume that it's a failure to them. It's like, you know, Millions of people bought the system. <laughs> yeah, millions of people bought the games. Yeah, I'm sorry you didn't like it, but it you know, it means that it's successful. And you can't just like wish it away. Oh, damn it. Too soon. I think I died at the very last part of this last time we played. <laughs> You know, there's still a perception even today that the uh, that the Wii, the original Wii, was a system that only existed for Wii Sports. It's just like, you know, they sold millions of pieces of software that were not Wii Sports on that system. But you know, because the the game press is is largely an immature crowd. Um, you know, it, it was really hard to. Uh, get people to just look at the regular evidence, you know, because it was, uh, it was always, uh, 
it was always a confirmation bias. Instead, you know, they would always look for news that, you know, said the, the Wii was not doing as well as uh, other systems, but not doing as well and... Uh, but, it, you know, well, and it'd be, be cherry-picked information, right? It's like, well, you know, uh, you know, Dead Rising didn't do as well. I was like, okay, well, that was one game. <laughs> You know, and it came, it's a port that came, you know, many, you know, months and years later. Although I did actually like the Dead Rising that was on the... That was on the uh, the Wii, because I didn't necessarily like the you know the, you know, the strict time limit from the original Dead Rising. Yeah, yeah, and of course after Dead Rising three, uh, which I uh, I played on the uh, I played on the 360, I think, or maybe it was the Xbox One. Um, after playing that, I don't, uh, I don't know if they can, if they can do better. <laughs> Dead Rising Four ended up being, you know, quite a disappointment compared to Dead Rising, Dead Rising Three. I think even now, um, I mean, getting back to uh, the, the popularity of a system. I think even now the Switch is, is um, uh, certainly more popular than the um, the Xbox One. Um, I think it's getting close to being more popular than the uh, PlayStation 4. You know, I mean, the, the PlayStation 4 was a massively successful system, but uh, with PlayStation 5 coming out and, you know, really the last um, two years have, have not been really all that kind to the you know, PlayStation 4. I mean, it was definitely time for Sony to move on. But the Switch has pretty much thrived ever since it debuted. Well, you know, if you read, um, depending on what uh, press you read, you may not think that the, the Switch is that successful. You may, you may read a press announcement about uh, FIFA not, you know, selling as much on the on the Switch, but then you'd be ignoring, you know, the tons of indie games that sell better on the Switch, you know, the tons of other third-party games that sell better on the Switch. But if you're of the mind and of the bias that uh, you only believe in, uh, uh, you only believe in announcements and press where it's uh, negatively reflected. You know, individual titles. You know, then you could be, you could convince yourself into thinking that the Switch wasn't just uh, a money-making machine for anything other than uh, Nintendo. But uh, it's definitely not the case. I don't know, and I, and I thought that the uh, that the press, as they got older, um, you know, reporters that have been reporting for a while, they'd get over that, uh, you know, that uh, Nintendo is a, is a sort of a meant for children. Um, but they still haven't, you know. I mean, we've got some we've got some old, you know, old reporters uh, and uh, and game journalists that are that are working, and they still have that weird old belief that they've carried with them <laughs> through. Through their, you know, through their entire adult career, that's uh, a shame to play a, a, a Nintendo game. It's like, you know, you're old now. Um, it actually doesn't matter. You have, you have no peers that you need to impress. <laughs> I bet you, that you should be worried about being ashamed of playing, uh, you know, Pokemon or uh, Bakugan. You know.
I mean, unless they're not good games. I mean, that's a different story, but you know, oftentimes those games are actually really good. And you know, you can play, um, you can play Bakugan and Mario and Grand Theft Auto. I mean, you can play all of those. <laughs> You know, and still be a hardcore gamer. You can look forward to Animal Crossing, which a lot of us did. Um, you know, and look forward to Grand Theft Auto 6. It's weird how people will give themselves those those game ultimatums, you know. It's like, no, 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 I can't... I can't like... I can't like Grand Theft Auto and Call of Duty you know, and like Pikmin. I was like, why? Are you not old enough to do all of that? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a weird conundrum people wrap themselves into. But uh, I've never had a problem with any of that, you know? I've never had a problem playing, uh, No, playing uh, Earthworm Jim and uh, and you know the original 2D Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. I remember those games, those overhead games. <laughs> I mean, uh, the funny thing about it is that the Grand Theft Auto, the the 2D games, they uh, and the 3D games, they really are like faithful to each other. I mean. Playing Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2, it really is basically the same game in 2D, you know, in overhead 2D. But that Grand Theft Auto 3 was such a, like, a revolution for uh, 3D gaming, for 3D open world gaming, that, uh, you know, we often forget about the 2D game, which was uh, really just the same game. You know, same very open structure, all the same gangs, a lot of the same sound effects. Less emphasis on story in, in the original Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2, but um, it was certainly there. Um, but that's also why you uh, see me covering such a wide variety of games. I mean, this is, you know, really not a shame to play any any kind of game. I'm just worried sometimes that um, some titles really, uh, you know, they either go too far into the, uh, you know, the the childhood genre, or they they're too simple and they're kind of really only meant for, uh, you know, people just kind of learning and getting grips with games. Uh, which I always feel that adults underestimate kids when, the, when we're talking about video games. Because we were kids too, and we mastered, you know, Mega Man. <laughs> we mastered Castlevania. We mastered some hard-ass games, and games that were not necessarily holding your hand for anything. And uh, they were just fine for us. And, you know, as adults, we just forget that you know, we had those skill sets you know, when we were younger. Kids can solve lots of very, very complex uh, game problems. You know, I remember playing Facts and Do, which is a, a game that's like baffling to a new player. I remember playing through that uh, on a rental. Uh, I don't think I got to the end, but I got really, really close. And then as an adult, I'm just like, how the hell did I figure this stuff out? This is hard. Yes, 
see another place over there. Do you want me to take these guys out? I don't think I can. I mean, I'm sure some of you wonder why, why I would, uh, you know, play, uh, you know, Dead Mad Rat or Cat Quest and then play Doom Eternal. I was like, well, if it's fun, I don't care. Life's too short to get hung up on, you know, whether something is a mature or a kitty or whatever label you want to use, you know. That, uh, oh boy. Getting dizzy yet? Boy, vomit inducing. Depending on what you're concentrating on, you know. Grabbed onto that, really. Hey, you grabbed onto that just fine. Really? Oh, 
so picky on that. Consider it. Anything else? I think we might be done with this. Let's see, did we talk to you? Oh, oh yeah. Time to death here soon. Hey, yo, got any tasty star bits? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 1600.
Transform. Star bunnies in the snow. Play chase. Can you catch us all before the time runs out? Boy, yong, yong. Oh, that was tricky.
Haha, <laughs> yeah, cut me. Please, you cut me. Me so long to catch that first rabbit. <laughs> Get the damn shell more. really hard to catch. He uses all the, like, the crevices and stuff against you. Eep, you're fast. I give up here. Take this. Boing. Thank you. 
Oh, I'm beat. You'll have to find the rest of the power stars. storybook? I don't think we did. Let's go. All right, then off we go. There's a warp field inside the Go, castle. Mario. Go, they're inside. Hurry. Mm -hmm, the fate of the universe. Oh, we managed to finish this today then. I mean, I have still have to get the other stars so I can finish the storybook.
<laughs> Not fast enough. I'm sorry, I have a hard time um, understanding the position of my character on the Z-axis in this game. I just oftentimes just not put them in the right 3D space and just get caught doing, you know, behind something or in front of something. I mean, it's been a problem out through all the game, if you've, <laughs> if you've been noticing. It's just sometimes I'm just not in the right 3D space. The stuff because you're, uh, you really can't depend on your shadow, uh, showing you where the next place you should be is, either. which is how you'd normally go about it. Looking for Princess Peach? Too bad, because she's with me. Finally! You got here just in time to see the creation of my galaxy in the center of the universe. Watch and weep! From this galaxy, I'll rule a great galactic empire with Peach by my side. It will last forever. I will rule every pitiful corner of the universe. So, Mario, as you can see, I got big plans. And stomping you is at the top of my list. And picking up some eggs, because I want to make some souffle later. Ah, oh, oops. I forgot about those.
how epic the music is. <laughs> I don't know, a lot of time for a low battery, huh? Guarantee. You got a grand star. The grand star. Huh? Mario, you're ripping my arm off its socket. Oh, my galaxy, my empire, 
This can't be happening! Do you hear the baby stars? These newborns will grow up to become galaxies someday. When stars die, they turn to stardust and scatter across the cosmos. Eventually, that stardust reforms to create a new star, and so the cycle of life continues. But the cycle never repeats itself in quite the same way. So, you'll see. I know how very metaphysical for a Mario game, huh? Yes, all new life carries the essence of stars, even all of you. Ah. Welcome! Welcome, new galaxy! Can't believe Mario's been around, been around so long and still speaks that broken English. <laughs> So there we go, that's uh, Super Mario Galaxy. Um, I will go through and uh, gather the rest of the stars uh, for this game, uh, just because I want to finish out the storybook. Um, and pretty much that's the only reason. Um, uh, so I don't know if you guys want to watch that. Uh, it, it's really just a, not too many stars to pick up. Um, but I will do just a separate video of me reading the storybook. Uh, I said, that, that, that piece of Mario Galaxy really deserves its own its own little video because it's such a it's such a a great little story uh, and something that's very surprising to see in a Mario game. Um, this was a 
at the time, certainly Mario's uh, return to true form. You know, we uh, received, you know, Mario, you know, New Super Mario Brothers, and um, a lot of people were disappointed by uh, Mario Sunshine. Uh, so to get, uh, you know, a very you know, a grand Mario game, 3D Mario game, was uh, was quite something, uh, especially on the Wii, where you know there was a lot of uh, more casual uh, casual shuffleware being uh, pushed on that system. Um, it was uh, it was surprising to get uh, so many Mario games. <laughs> I mean, we got quite a few Mario games on on the Wii. Um, not so much on the Wii U, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, I guess we got we got at least two Zelda games too. Now I think about it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the game is still fun to play through. Uh, it still has just the right balance of challenge. Uh, and uh, it gives you plenty of lives this time around, so you're not going to be kicked out to the main screen all the time. I think this is uh, sort of the culmination of uh, the new team of uh, Mario designers, um, plus uh, you know, still retaining some of that old feel that, uh, that we fell in love with as the, as the years went by. I think it really is one of the uh, one of the best uh, Mario games out there. Uh, a lot of people feel that Mario Galaxy 2 is is even better. Um, I I don't know. I mean, I, I think they're more extensions of each other. Um, sort of like how uh, you know the original Super Mario Brothers and uh, Super Mario Brothers Lost Levels are you know they're, technically they're sequels, but they're just extended versions of the same game, um, which. Uh, which is okay for most games, <laughs> as far as sequels are concerned. But uh, in the Mario, the mainline Mario games, they, they do try to mix it up quite a bit. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, playing um, uh, Mario uh, World again, or um, 3D World again. Um, that was also one of my favorites. I mean, really, they've really been doing well with the mainline Mario games uh, as of uh, you know the last two systems. Um, you know, I think only the GameCube one is the one that's uh, you know people aren't aren't all that fond of. Um, I, I still like it, but I also acknowledge that it's it's not as good as the other ones. Um, but you know, it's a, a bad Mario game is still better than most games. <laughs> so uh, I think it was good to see this in the uh, see that game in this collection, uh, along with uh, Mario 64 and this game. Um, I really do wish they could have squeezed in Mario Galaxy 2, um, but uh, the uh, the likelihood that these games will appear as separate items instead of all in the collection, you know, it's probably pretty high. And uh, likely when that happens, we're, we'll probably get uh, Mario Galaxy 2 then. Um, I know it ran off a slightly different, well, a, a more modified version of the engine, so maybe they're having trouble with it um, and couldn't make it out in time for a holiday, a holiday title. Um, totally understand that. You know, they wanted to get it out, and uh, the first three games are really good. So, or the first three games are really good. So, you know, yes, it would be nice to have four, but three is good too. Yeah, and of course I look forward to uh, more Mario on the Switch. Um, hopefully they will make another one another mainline game. Um, Thank you so much for playing my game. And uh, for you folks who are lucky enough to, uh, oh, okay, we will do the storybook. All right, great. Yeah, I'm so uh, I'm so happy there's still an audience for Mario, and that uh, Nintendo has been smart with the Mario franchise. Um, even though a, there is a ton of Mario games, um, you know, crossing many many different genres. Welcome back! I knew you would return eventually. Please look at down at your feet. This number you see represents the number of power stars you need to access another world. Whether you succeed or fail, just attempting the challenge will show something about your character. Oh, that's right. I think we get, I think we get more lives this time around. Or maybe that's only after we get 120. Yeah. Right. Let's get that storybook. That's like the ultimate reward of that storybook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, with no storybook in Mario Galaxy 2, I, uh, I was less motivated to finish it. Ooh. Let us 
begin. Chapter 8 The Wish Though usually quite cheery, one day the girl became sad again. Lima drew close and tried to comfort her. Mama, you still have me. And don't be sad about your mama, because she's a part of you. That means she'll always be close by. It's like me. I love star bits because they remind me of my mama. No, no, the girl said, unable to stop the tears. A lonely look flickered across Luma's face, but it was soon replaced by a wide grin. I have an idea. I will transform into a comet, a soaring comet that can carry you all on this journey. With that, Luma, trailing bands of white, soared high into the sky and just as quickly started to plummet back down. Kabloom! Kablam! The ground shook and a bright light poured out of the crater that Luma had created. The bands of light twisted together to form a comet tail. And then Luma emerged, reborn as a comet. The girl could scarcely believe her eyes. But how? she kept asking. Our destinies as Lumas is to transform into different things, said a red Luma who had suddenly appeared. Stars, comets, planets, we can become all of these things. When I grow up, I want to become a star that makes someone's special smile, said a green Luma. A blue Luma chimed in. That Luma turned into a real cutie of a comet, didn't he? All of the Lumas together said, No more crying, Mama. Thank you, said the girl in a whisper, as she pulled the Lumas close and hugged them. From that day on, Sarbitz no longer fell from the girl's eyes. The comet set forth for the girl's home planet, its long tail blazing proudly behind it. Final chapter, Family. With its many lumas and telescopes, the comet was quite a sight to behold. The girl and the lumas were proud to call it home. At a welcoming party for a new Luma, the girl gathered everyone in the kitchen and said in a louder voice than usual, All right, everyone, let's make a cake. A cake sprinkled with star bits. Then it will be a star cake. Oh. Hey, whoopsie. Uh, the Lumas were uh, very excited about it. Uh, uh, as she watched the Lumas scurry about, the girl smiled and thought to herself, This is my family now and I will stay with them until they're ready to leave the nest. And when they do leave, I'll see them off with a smile. Because that's what makes mother happiest. That night, when the girl lay down to sleep, a soft light enveloped her and reminded her of the blue planet she once called home. But it would be nice to return home every once or every 100 years to nap in my favorite sleeping nook. The comet carrying the Lumas and the girl continued on its journey to this very day. With more family members in tow that can be counted, it's said that the comet visits the girl's home planet once every hundred years, its proud white tail glittering in the sky. The End That's all. That's all. My story is finished. Ah, so good. Anyway, uh, this is Autopostrophe. You've been watching uh, Super Mario uh, 3D All-Star Super Mario Galaxy on Nintendo Switch. Uh, we've come to basically the end of our journey with all these games. Um, again, if you want to see me get the uh, the, the reigning 15 stars, uh, we can do that. But uh, I think for the most part, the, you will probably want to all gather the last 15 yourselves and uh, have fun with the game. Um, just remember to go purchase it. Uh, it is available for a limited time uh, physically. 
uh, and uh, digitally as well, because <laughs> Nintendo is weird. Um, so uh, get it while you can uh, at the price that it's available for now. Uh, I imagine that they're going to charge a little bit more for the individual titles, so this is probably the only time you'll get a bargain like this. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a great way to celebrate, celebrate Mario's 35th anniversary. Uh, it's hard to believe we've been playing this game for 35 years. Um, uh, but here we are. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching. I will see you at the next stream.